Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the meshless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Come Out of Her, My People broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. Amen. This broadcast is dedicated, ladies and gentlemen, to those that love truth. If you love truth, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips. We let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into a man, a message on this day. As a young preacher, like most young preachers, I had high hopes and great expectations that I was going to reach the world with the gospel. Boy, was I wrong. Before I pastored, I had success in preaching revivals throughout the South and Midwest. At this early stage of my ministry, I was of the apostolic persuasion. But I had a higher standard of holiness among my peers. I preached against pagan holidays such as Christmas, Easter, and Valentine's. I taught the post-trib that the church would go through the great tribulation. I preached against watching television and women preachers. I preached against women wearing pants, makeup, jewelry, and nail polish. So with the limited success, ladies and gentlemen, of me evangelizing, I felt if Yahweh would call me into the office of a pastor, I would be successful. But doing the transitioning from an evangelist to a pastor, Yahweh revealed to me the Seventh-day Sabbath and the dietary law. Therefore, in 1997, I began pastoring in Louisiana. Things did not go the way I anticipated it. For the first year and a half, we grew very slowly. I began calling myself non-denomination. Then in the latter end of 1998, I began broadcasting on the radio that covered at least 20 states and the Caribbeans. We received a lot of positive response from the radio. People would travel out of, out of town to visit the ministry. And we had several people move from out of town to join the ministry. Plus, I had people call me from different states to minister to their small groups. Mostly, they gathered in homes. Also, I had several people call me to baptize them and their families. We grew from seven people in 1997 to about 50 people in 2006. That's adults and children together. Things in the ministry did not go as expected. I thought that the ministry would be further than it was in 10 years. In 2007, we purchased 15 acres of land and built a 40 by 100 square foot metal church structure, which had a city capacity of 350 people. In the 10 years we assembled in that tabernacle, we never reached over 50 congregants. I tried street preaching, door to door witnessing, online preaching, everything one could do to reach souls, but it seems nothing worked. 
I always believed that there were a remnant of true believers that would be saved. But I felt that if we reached 300 people, that would still be a remnant. That's why I built the tabernacle with a sitting capacity of 350 people. We thought maybe the area we were living in in Louisiana was hindering us from reaching more people. We tried traveling to North Central Louisiana weekly to preach there because we got on a local radio station and reached a couple families. But the people in that area rejected the message also. We did not have the resources to continue in North Central Louisiana. And I, I didn't realize at the time, ladies and gentlemen, that I was, was not preaching religion. I was preaching truth. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, we did not reach as many people as I anticipated. It was the message, the true message that I was preaching, ladies and gentlemen. But I couldn't see it uh, at the time. In all of this, Yahweh was teaching me a valuable lesson about a remnant of believers. Yahweh was teaching me that the remnant of believers was much smaller than I thought. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 1 and verse 9, except Yahweh of hosts have left us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and Gomorrah. Notice it says a very small remnant, not a remnant, but an extremely small remnant, ladies and gentlemen. However, I was not yet persuaded that it was only a, few, a very small remnant. In 2015, we left Louisiana in search of Yahweh's people. We moved the ministry to Atlanta, Georgia. I thought truly we would reach more people being in a new place with a larger population. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> However, seven years in Atlanta, Georgia, we reached only a couple of people. Can you believe that? I tried street preaching, door-to-door -door witnessing, but nothing had positive effects. We had people hang around, but they would not repent and totally surrender to Yahweh. Well, we had people that came around, but they did not totally surrender to Yahweh and repent of their sins. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. Then I finally got the revelation of the remnant. Yahweh showed me I was spinning my wheels. I had to experience all of this to get insight for me to be enlightened. Every move I made was a valuable lesson that I learned, ladies and gentlemen. Christians can reach people because they are preaching a weak and watered down message. They're not preaching nothing, ladies and gentlemen. I was preaching truth. Christians are deceived. They think they are reaching souls, but they are not, ladies and gentlemen. Christian pastors cannot minister biblical salvation. No one is getting saved in the Christian church. Christian pastors only preach a form of godliness. The Christian church is not making true converts. The Christian church is only spreading religion, not truth. It's a big difference, a vast difference between truth and religion. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 gives us, us a prophecy concerning Christianity. It declares having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. <clears throat> Religion is another term for a form of godliness. Christians have been indoctrinated with religion, not truth. And when they hear 
truth being preached. It is so strange and so foreign to them. And they immediately begin to attack it because they don't understand truth. They haven't been taught truth. And when they hear truth, they think, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's something that's crazy. Amen. Something that's loony, ladies and gentlemen. Christians really believe the truth when they hear it to be doctrines of devils. Let me say that again. When Christians hear the truth, they actually think it is doctrines of devils. Christians believe the truth to be evil. Anytime they hear the truth preached, they think that the one who is preaching it is a devil or a cult, cult, a cult leader. Man, that man's crazy. He's, he's off the chain, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they think because they never heard truth preached before. And they attack truth when they hear the truth. They say, oh, man, that's, that's evil. Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter number Five. Look what it says in verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They call truth today evil. Truth is good, but they call it evil. That put darkness for light, ladies and gentlemen, and light for darkness. When they hear the light, the light of the glorious gospel, they say it's dark, ladies and gentlemen, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for for bitter. Today, people call falsehood sweet and they call the truth bitter. Do you hear me? They call the truth bitter, ladies and gentlemen. Go, because simply it's because they are biblically and historically illiterate. They don't know the scriptures. Many Christians, the only time they pick up their Bible is when they go to their place of worship. And if they do pick it up during the discourse of the week, it's only for a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yahoshua said in John chapter 5 verse 43, search the scriptures and them you think you have eternal life, they are they which testify of me. Christianity cannot make one ready for eternal life because Christianity, all it does is propagate religion, a form of of godliness. Christianity is just religion. Religion is diabolical. Yahweh abhors religion. Religion reaches and draws the masses. However, truth reaches a very small remnant. Let me say that again. Religion reaches and draws the masses. However, truth reaches a very small remnant. I just seen a clip online how the Roman Catholic Church this year has received a large increase in new converts. Many Roman Catholic churches in the U.S. has received a 50 to 90 percent growth in attendance this year. The Roman Catholic Church, like all other Christian denominations, only teaches religion, not truth. Religion is appealing to people. It is convenient. Religion don't require much of a transformation. In the majority of Christian denominations, you can continue to live immoral, practice paganism, celebrate pagan holidays, such as Christmas, Easter, Valentine, Halloween, Mardi Gras, celebrate birthdays with blowing out candles on cakes. By the way, all of these things are pagan practices. If you will go online and do your research, Christians today are lazy. They want their pastor to do everything. They just lazy, ladies and gentlemen. Christians are not challenged to give up zodiac signs. Christians still participate in secret societies such as Freemasons, Eastern Stars. They join college fraternities and sororities. Ladies and gentlemen, all the, the origins of these things 
is occult, is occultic, is paganism. Christian women wear pants, shorts, makeup, jewelry, lipstick, nail polish, high heel. Christian men wear braids, earrings, clean shave, wear shorts, and revealing clothes. You have Christian homosexuals today, and most of the Christian churches today, ladies and gentlemen, even the Seventh-day Adventists we see in America, they are embracing same-sex marriage and homosexuality, ladies and gentlemen. You got Christian homosexuals, and they don't have to even give up their lifestyle. You got Christian pastors that are homosexuals and have their boyfriends in the church, or Christian women pastors with their girlfriend right there in the church living together. Call themselves married, married, but that garbage is not marriage. Yahweh only honor a man, marriage between a man and a woman, ladies and gentlemen. Not a man and a man and a woman and a woman. The Bible tells us, amen, in the book of 1 Corinthians 7 and 1, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, but to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own own husband. It didn't say let every man have his own husband and let every uh, woman have her own wife, ladies and gentlemen. Bless Yahweh for the truth. Christians cohabitate or shack up, if you don't know what that means. They fornicate, commit adultery, they smoke cigarettes, use profanity, gamble, play the lotto, eat unclean food, don't observe the dietary law. Christian women preach and pastor churches. Christians drink alcohol. They party, get drunk, get high, listen to secular music. Christians listen to comedians. Christians dance, listen to secular music, watch pornography, watch horror movies and violence, watch nasty movies, etc. See, Christians don't have to give nothing up. See, religion don't convict. Religion is convenient, ladies and gentlemen. Religion allow you to go along in sin. Just accept Christ in your heart. Just say a sinner's prayer. And now you have a license to sin because we have grace now. They quote John 1 and 17, which says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You know, I read off this list to you of all the things that Christians do today. I preach against every single one of them. Now you understand. Now I had to understand that. Why I wasn't receiving the church growth like the other pastors was. Because they weren't preaching what I was preaching. I was preaching the truth. I was preaching the Bible. And they was not, ladies and gentlemen. And I understood. Y'all had to show me. This is why you're not growing. This is not why you're not reaching the soul. People don't want the truth. They hate the truth. Paul said in Galatians 4 and 16, Have I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Yes, Christians love to quote John 1 and 17, which says, For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. Christians say because we live in the dispensation of grace, we have grace now to sin. And Yahweh will overlook our sin. We have a license to sin because we're in the dispensation of grace. We have grace. We do we grace. Grace. That's what they say. But they don't even have a clue what grace means. Let me show you what grace means how grace is described in the Bible, in the book of Titus, chapter 2. Listen to this, Titus chapter number 2. Listen what it says about grace. And verse 11, For the grace of Elohim that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Listen. Now listen what grace does. Grace, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. That's what grace teaches you. Christians have a, a misinterpretation of what grace really is, ladies and gentlemen.
They don't know what grace really is. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is not a license to do wicked things and expect Yahweh to cover it, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Acts 17 and verse 30 declares, And the times of this ignorance Elohim winked at, but now commends all men everywhere to repent. Yahoshua declared, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. When the last time you heard preachers preach about repentance? What is repentance? To turn your back on sin. To make a about face. To turn from sin. Uh, uh, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, ladies and gentlemen, tells us if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Repentance, true repentance. When the last time you heard true repentance? You know, the gospel today that's being preached attracts the masses, the numbers. But the true gospel, ladies and gentlemen, is not attractive. Paul said in Romans chapter number six, uh, chapter one in verse 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Mashiach, for it is the power of Elohim unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. See, the gospel that's being propagated today, the gospel that's being preached today, ladies and gentlemen, it attracts the masses because it's just religion. Religion attracts the mass. Religion appeals to people because it's convenient. You don't have to turn your back on sin. You can have religion and still sin. You can have religion and sin, ladies and gentlemen. The scriptures say, how long will you halt between two opinions? If Yahweh be Elohim, follow him. If Baal, follow him. Yahushua said, no man can serve two masters. He'll love one and hate the other. Hold to one and despise the other. Ladies and gentlemen, let me read a, a passage of scripture to you out of the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter uh, number 6. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you never hear these messages preached. Amen today because they don't want, you know, these preachers today are political correct. They don't want to frighten nobody. They don't want to uh, scare nobody off because they love that money. They got to get that money. We can't offend nobody because if we offend them, they'll go and we'll lose that money. Ladies and gentlemen, what the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 and 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, while many have covered after their air from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Let me read this to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, people having premarital sex, nor idolaters. I heard one ma major preacher, false prophet with long hair, ladies and gentlemen, wearing dreadlocks, preacher wearing dreadlocks, and the Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 14, doesn't nature itself teach you it's a shame that man wear long hair? And he says nothing wrong with fornication. Fornication is okay. I wonder what Bible these, these perverts are reading, ladies and gentlemen. It said, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. That means men with women characteristics, men with m women traits, ladies and gentlemen. Talk like a woman, move like a woman. Glory to Yahweh. No abusers of themselves with mankind. That's homosexuality, sodomy, ladies and gentlemen, lesbianism. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortionists, gamblers, unjust wages. Anytime you receive unjust wages, it's extortion. Shall inherit the kingdom of Elohim. If they're not going to inherit the kingdom of Elohim, that means they're going to inherit a man hell. Are you listening to me? It says, now watch this verse 11. And such were some of you. We used to be like that. Past tense. But ye are washed now. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the master, Yahoshua, 
and by the spirit of our Elohim. See, such were some of you, past tense. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Mashiach, which Christians say Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, when you speak truth, people are going to hate you. They're going to judge you. They're going to criticize you. But it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. You have to tell the people the truth. Yahweh had to reveal to me the reason I could not reach many souls. Listen, I, I tried everything. I went to door to door. We had sh uh, street services. We got online. We preached, did radio. We did everything we could possibly to reach souls. But people didn't like our message. Oh, we put a lot of labor in. More labor than most preachers. And they got large crowds. Ladies and gentlemen. If I was preaching what they was preaching, I have great, a much larger crowd than they have. Because I put a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a passion for souls. I still have a passion for souls. But I realize there's only going to be a few going to be saved. Yahoshua said in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 7 verse 14. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life and Few be that will find it, ladies and gentlemen. There's not many people going to be saved. Many people are going to go on that broad and wide way. Broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads us to destruction. Many will go therein. That's the way of religion. Religious tradition. Yahushua told the people of this day, through your traditions, you'll make the word of Yahweh a non-effect. Some of us are so set in our ways and we close minded. That's what your problem is. You're closed minded. You're set in your ways. You can't teach your old dog new trick. Lady said, I got it. I have arrived. I apprehend. That's what you think. It's going to be bad when people stand before Yahweh thinking that they made heaven, made it to heaven, doing everything right. And they're going to stand before Yahweh. And, and, and they say, they're going to say, uh, uh, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We, we cast out devils in your name. We, we did many wonderful works in your name. He's going to tell them, depart from me, ye that work is iniquity lawlessness for I never knew you ain't that going to be a sad day it's going to be a, a root, very rude awakening for many Christians on that day ladies and gentlemen because they reject the truth they reject the truth I know the truth is not popular today glory to Yahweh Yahweh had to reveal to me the reason I could not reach many souls because I was preaching the truth I thought because if I was preaching I was going to reach souls but Yahweh shall be you preaching the truth, son, as in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. How many Noah reach? Seven souls. Only eight souls were saved by water, ladies and gentlemen. Yahweh had to reveal to me the reason I could not reach many souls because I was preaching truth and not the Christian religion. Today, when you preach truth, it is like signing your death sentence, ladies and gentlemen. When you preach truth, it's like signing your death sentence. Second Timothy chapter four, in my conclusion, second Timothy chapter four and verses two through four, Paul told Timothy, he said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come, and we're here, we are here. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You can't get Christians today to endure sound doctrine. Many of many of them can't take thirty minutes to listen to this. They they probably listen five ten minutes of it, and they and, and they shut me off and they moved on. They will not endure sound doctrine, and many of them close minded. Many of them sat in their ways, ladies and gentlemen. They ain't going to give you a time of day because what they've been taught was right. Well, this is what I've been knowing since I was a child and I grew up in this. Listen, I was born in the Roman Catholic Church. I couldn't stay because I was Roman Catholic. I mean, you mean to tell me I'm going to stay there? But as I begin to mature, I begin to do research and study, ladies and gentlemen, I begin to find out the Roman Catholic Church is wrong. Many of you have inherited lies. Many of you are in denominations and churches that you inherit from your ancestors, from your, your, your relatives. 
But you won't do any research to find out, ladies and gentlemen, that what you was taught was not right. Some was. There were some elements of truth, some fractions of truth. But overall, what you was taught was wrong. Paul said, uh, told Timothy, preach the word, be in, in, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but heap at the day on lust, teachers having itching ears, and shall turn their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. May Yahweh bless you. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. We would appreciate all our friends if you would like, share, and subscribe. Now send your comments, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to hear from you, like to hear your thoughts. Glory to Yahweh. Well, until next time, amen. May Yahweh continue to bless you. You that are in the U.S. in your Sabbath, you that are in the West, y'all in your Sabbath, have a blessed Sabbath. We pray that you have a blessed Sabbath. Here in Nairobi, Kenya, our Sabbath uh, was completed about an hour ago, ladies and gentlemen. But you are still in your Sabbath, and may Yahweh bless you. You have a beautiful Sabbath. And until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you as I pray. Shalom. Shalom.